Hello, I'm Elizabeth Luard. Welcome to Easter week in Eastern Europe. Fast, quite properly, precedes feast, and the deprivations of Lent are intensified in Holy Week. It's Thursday of Easter week, Green Thursday, the day when all God-fearing housewives should attend to the spring cleaning, both physical and spiritual. And of course, the most important house in the village, the house of God, must also be polished up and made ready for the Easter ceremonies of burial and rebirth. The period of abstinence which commemorates our Lord's 40 days in the wilderness lasts from Ash Wednesday to the Resurrection on Easter Sunday. In the old days, no food at all was taken from sunrise to sunset, and the faithful abstained from meat, eggs and dairy products when they broke their fast at nightfall. Today, in the mountains of northern Hungary, the fast is drawing to a close. The Palok village of Holoku retains many of the customs of its ancestors, particularly when it comes to celebrating a festival. On Good Friday, it's the elder women of the village who keep the vigil in the absence of the priest, retelling once again the story of our Lord's Passion. At the funeral wake, in memory of the Mother of God, it's their privilege to lead the mourning chant. It's no accident that the Lent fast coincides with a time of reduced agricultural activity and the rapid emptying of the winter larder. Most of Holoku's houses have cellars dug out beneath them under the slope of the hill for storing potatoes, turnips for both people and cattle, wine and the paraphernalia for wine making. I'm invited back to learn how to prepare the Easter food in the Fabian household. We're preparing two pasta dishes with the same all-egg dough. Allow one egg between two people, a pinch of salt, of course, work as much flour as will make a firm dough. The proportion is about twice the weight of flour to the weight of the egg. Knead it thoroughly. To make the poppy seed noodles, or any noodles for that matter, roll the dough out as thin as a coin on a floured board. Fold it and cut it into fine strips. Throw the noodles into plenty of fast boiling salted water. They should take no more than three minutes. You drain them. Then rinse them under the cold tap immediately to stop them sticking and halt the cooking process. Then they're sprinkled with a little sugar and the noodles go out onto the table on the porch to cool. Even the cats have been having a lean time of it in Lent. Meanwhile, we're making the pinched dumplings for the bean soup, the bablevesh. Just the egg noodle dough pinched off in small pieces. Throw the little dumplings into boiling salted water, wait till they bob to the surface, drain them, and rinse them under cold water. And serve them with the bean soup. It's made with pinto beans. Dark colored beans are favored for this day of morning, soaked overnight, 
and cooked for a couple of hours with whatever pot vegetables are still left over from the winter stores. Turnips, carrots, potatoes, onions, and a bay leaf and a pinch of caraway seeds for flavor. The little pinch dumplings give the soup body and substance. The soup is meatless and fatless, of course. Very simple, but clean tasting and good. But the classic fasting food of all Europe is fish. But for that, we have to go down to the plain. River fish soup with noodles is the traditional fasting dish for Good Friday. As in the mountains, an all egg noodle dough made from materials which can be grown in the home patch goes to make up any shortfall from the fisherman's net. Bravo. 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 Okay. <laughs> Aki volt itten iskola igazgató, annak a fia, az is kint van. És azt mondják, hogy én nagyon hasonlítok az édesapámra, majd arról megismernek kint. The noodles go into boiling salted water for three minutes. Then they are stirred into the soup. Today, the sweet breads are prepared for Easter. There's a wide range of these festive treats to be found all round Europe. The best known of these is the Polish babka, of which this is a Hungarian version. Although in some areas the dough itself is enriched with eggs, in others, particularly around the Mediterranean, the eggs, unshelled, go to decorate the bread itself. These moni or monk breads combine both egg within and egg without. Back in Holoku, the noodles are cool and ready to be dressed with roughly ground poppy seeds. Poppy seeds were once a staple of the European diet. Grown as a backyard crop, they are still used in great quantity in Eastern Europe. For this dish, Marcos Chi, you need plenty, so the noodles are quite black. There's a general feeling that Good Friday's food is morning food and should be as black as possible. Marcos Chi. The Paloc people who settled the forested slopes of the Matra Hills are the direct descendants of the Kabar tribes who lived exclusively from the chase. Livestock remains their special enthusiasm, with pigs, rabbits and barnyard fowl now replacing the wild creatures. This is vine growing territory. Both bull's blood and the famous wines of Tokai are made near here. At this time of year, the vines have to be pruned. Outdoor spring cleaning is as important as indoor, and the prunings will go for firewood. Pleasure in the joys of spring is not the only thing the household pig shares with the household. The pig is the perfect recycling machine for humanity's edible debris. 
Up in Holoku, we have the last of the winter's ham to enjoy. The bone goes to make a fine jelly, and the meat goes into water to be simmered for a few hours. Meanwhile, there's the Easter cheesecake to be prepared for tomorrow. That's about a kilo of flour, one egg, and enough warm milk to make a soft dough. And the yeast frothed up in warm milk. The oven must be good and hot. There's a lot to be cooked. Beat it up, sprinkle with flour, and the dough must be marked with a cross. It's put to rise in a warm place. The baking tray must be buttered. A goose feather brush does the job. And the dough is rolled out to fit the baking tray. That is curd cheese, potato, egg, raisins, and sugar, okay. and with also with cream as well. Cinnamon and sugar is sprinkled on the top. Hmm? Imported spices are a better. great treat, Sugar. and you want them to be admired yeah. and savoured. Out it comes. Isn't that beautiful? In the old days, people never tasted sweet things except on holy days. What's the name? The broth for the jelly is ready, and the meat goes in as the garnish. Variations on this pork jelly are found as Easter food all over the Balkans, into Greece, and right up into Scandinavia. Here it's set out in individual soup plates and then put in a cool place to set overnight. And it's time to paint the Easter eggs. The techniques and designs are different everywhere. Up here in the mountains, we use what comes to hand. A stick with a pen nib tied to it, dipped in plain melted wax. It's a batik technique. It may be a bit primitive, but we're after effect. Traditionally, these eggs were gifts for the young men of the village, who would go from house to house on Easter Monday, sprinkling any unmarried girl with water. The wax-patterned eggs are ready to be dyed red. You can buy this colouring paper, or you can use ordinary food colouring. Natural red dyes range from brick dust to Brazil wood, cochineal to red cabbage. There are a great many theories about why Easter eggs are usually dyed red. There's a universal belief, going back to prehistoric times, that red is lucky and will chase away malevolent spirits. Although more complicated Christian explanations centre around the saving blood of Christ. But down on the more affluent plain, what was a simple homely task has become an art form. The ladies of Kaloxa are famous for their skills, covering every household surface with multicolored blossoms. Mm. The traditional patterns are stylized flowers, carnations, bluebells, geraniums. Although the tulip is thought to be the most venerable. Paprika, Hungary's favorite spice, is a more recent popular addition. The blown eggs are threaded through with string so they can be hung up on the egg tree.
The distinctive flower motives appear everywhere, on domestic objects, on the walls. The skills of these ladies are in demand in city apartments these days. And in the richly embroidered clothes, which some people still wear on high days and holidays. Ez a szín, ez a szomorú színnek mondják, ez, ezt a szín már ilyen időskorúaknak kell varni, mert én már nem járhatok a lányommal egyforma színbe. The designs indicate age and marital status, as well as the village the wearer comes from. Older women wear the more somber blue and purple. Rich reds in the colors of summer are for the matrons, while the young girls are decked in the bright blossoms of spring. <laughs> Holoku Church dates from the 14th century and it holds about 100 people. Enough space to accommodate the inhabitants of the old village, which is built on such a steep slope that there was no room for more. The congregation is Roman Catholic and it's time for the Mass of the Resurrection. Christ is risen. The light of the world has returned. The Easter candle is all things to all men, demonstrating, in spite of the brollies, the life-giving fire of the returning sun. Amen. Amen. The Holy Sacrament is carried in procession round the village so that the risen Christ can bless the houses. The villagers carry the church's banners and people set their own household religious images in their windows to receive the blessing in passing. The old costumes are worn by those who feel inclined. Mature ladies are not supposed to dress in finery and wear darker tops with simpler decorations. White embroidery rather than colored on the blouses and dark colored jewelry and bonnets. The magnificently crowned young women are last year's brides, entitled to wear their bridal crafts, the great headdress, only until the birth of their first child. The Easter meal is ready on the table. We have eggs, of course, and slices of ham, horseradish. I brought my contribution to the mountain festivities from the orchards of the plain. <laughs> a bottle of Barak Palinka, apricot brandy, dry but richly perfumed, and full of the flavor of summer sunshine. Bravo! <laughs> <laughs> The Easter meal has to have an element of bitterness for the sufferings of Christ. But all over Eastern Europe, Easter Sunday is the day to look out your granny's petticoats, polish up your dancing boots, and get out on the floor.
Over the past 13 weeks, we have seen and experienced many traditions all over Europe. And like all travelers, we share many memories. Enjoying good company in the forests of Slovakia, cracking the ice in the frozen ports of Holland, cruising down the Rhine. We saw the villages, the towns, the cities, and the great rivers which nurture them. The valleys, the mountains, and who could forget the Magyar horsemen of the great Hungarian plain? The magnificent simple food. Good raw material doesn't come much more raw than this. We've shared carp soup with the river fishermen of Seged and a bouillabaisse with a real Marseillaise. Enjoyed polenta in the mountains of Carnia. I can still taste that paella we had in Spain. Eaten lamb with wheat in the hills of Provence. And that Hungarian paprikash was well worth toasting. Now we know how to welcome a newborn baby. How to bake an apple pie in the Black Forest. And throw up the best nut cake in the world. Mix an Irish flummery. Share a cup with a Ruthenian shepherd. And suck an egg with grandma. But most memorable of all must be the people whose ordinary lives and extraordinary festivals we have been invited to share, however briefly, with the ladies of Ronda in the mountains of Andalusia, the clock dancers of Alton in Holland, with the Camargue horsemen in the old Roman town of Al. East, west, maybe home is best. Even if it's only to have the time to savor the memories back on Mull in the Scottish Hebrides. <laughs>